Commander, what is your status? Mission accomplished, Lord Nygog. We're Skyping with the documents right now. Well done, Fives. Return to the ship immediately. This time, we will not allow Watchtower to plead poverty. I'll cover your escape. We would be honored if you would join us. Oh, Tangelo, never say I don't do anything for you. Today, we've got some not-so-secret documents to prove that Watchtower isn't the kindly little religious movement that it claims to be. But instead, it's a multi-billion dollar religious publication machine. We've got the internal and external documents to prove that Jehovah's Witnesses are just the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society's piggy bank. So let's start from the top. According to Thales Learning and Development, in January of 2023, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society was estimated to be worth somewhere in the neighborhood of $2.1 billion. The company also predicts that Watchtower revenue is somewhere in excess of a billion dollars a year. So that would qualify Watchtower as a multi-billion dollar company. Video's over, right? Wrong. We need to determine where this money is coming from, especially when the Watchtower doesn't actually sell anything, charge admission, or otherwise provide services for money. Let's go to the horse's mouth first and see how Jehovah's Witnesses say that they're financed. According to their official website under the article, How is the work of Jehovah's Witnesses financed? The Watchtower claims their funds primarily come from donations from Jehovah's Witnesses. Minor note, the asterisk in the paragraph does indeed denote that some donations come from non-witnesses, though it is unknown if these are just well-meaning worldly people or other members of the congregation that simply aren't baptized like new Bible students and the unbaptized children of Jehovah's Witnesses, or even a combination of both. They also mention that they are more than willing to accept charitable gifts. Please contact the local branch office of Jehovah's Witnesses for further details if you would like to make a donation that involves bank accounts, insurance and retirement plans, real estate, stocks and bonds, wills and trusts, but how much could this possibly amount to? And how much could it be worth? Well, luckily, we've already got the numbers. The governing body members themselves sent a letter in the August 2021 letter to elders. In the global announcements and reminders, there's an announcement that the Jehovah's Witnesses congregations will donate a certain amount of money every month to what's called the worldwide work. Or, in other words, the branch office, a local Bethel office that runs the funds back to the corporate headquarters in New York, and then distributes it as it sees fit. There was a table within the letter with a sample of the U.S. branch office's expected donations. Thank you to Berean Pickett's, another XJW YouTuber, for hosting this on his website. So, according to the chart provided in the August 21st S-147 package, these are the pledges per publisher per month expected for each congregation in the United States of America and the islands in the Caribbean. Note that Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands are counted separately from the USA. We've taken this table and converted all donations into U.S. dollars specifically. With the numbers posted, we can estimate that just from the U.S. and its surrounding islands, Watchtower receives $124,363,101.90 a year from its publishers, who in 2022 totaled $1,238,431 which would equate to roughly $96.74 donated per member per year. If we were to apply that same figure to the nearly 8.7 million members featured in the 2022 grand totals, that implies that Watchtower has received $841,545,903.52 from its members' donations on the high end. But Darth, that's an absurd number. Watchtower keeps its members poor. I hear you and I see you, so how about this? I have averaged the donation amount without taking the median, mode, or any Gaussian distribution into account. Mostly because I don't have European, African, Asian, South American, or Australian figures in addition to missing the vast majority of North America. Just based on these figures from the US branch, we've averaged the suggested donation amount per publisher down to $4.12 a month, or $49.44 a year. Multiply that by the total number of witnesses, and on an extreme lowball, we can determine that Watchtower is pulling in 
$430,080,933.12 a year just on donations alone. There's obviously disparity between more developed and less developed nations in which publishers are expected to donate more, and there are non-publishers and entities also donating, so these numbers could very well exceed my upper limit. But for this portion of the video, we'll just assume it's the lowball guess of $430 million, which is a lot of money, but doesn't quite support that this is a multi-billion dollar organization. Charity Intelligence of Canada gives us a slightly better look at the organization. The Canadian branch of the Watchtower had revenues in excess of $100 million, very similar to the United States. And this is despite American witnesses outnumbering Canadian witnesses about 10 to 1, with 95% of that being donations in cold hard cash. It was also listed as receiving some $5.7 million in donations of goods, with the Canadian branch pulling in approximately $70 million in profits for the org after costs, and then another $576,000 in investments. These figures are in Canadian dollars by the way so feel free to adjust them for your locality. Interestingly enough, the same article dictates that the witnesses have some 95 million Canadian dollars in cash in reserve as of the year 2021. So two developed countries with revenues around 100 million US dollars a year. My figure of 840 million dollars doesn't sound so silly anymore, does it? But wait, there's more. Donations aside, the watch hour has another verifiable form of income their real estate portfolio. According to the religion's own numbers, there are over 117,000 congregations worldwide, meaning that they have tens of thousands of kingdom halls at their disposal. Not over 100,000 properties, since most halls are shared by, at minimum, two congregations to accommodate different language groups usually. Additionally, there are 86 branch offices in the real estate portfolio, all of which have an on-the-books value and are being sold off at a surprising rate like this former Kingdom Hall that sold for nearly $700,000. Recently, the Jehovah's Witnesses have sold their old Brooklyn Bethel sites for a total over $700 million in the last decade, as recently as 2016. They've also sold other sites like the ones on Clark Street and Adams Street for prices in excess of $50 million apiece in some cases. Really, Brooklyn was the golden goose for this organization. And Jay-Z. Another footnote to address is subsidies. For example, in Norway, Jehovah's Witnesses had received a few million dollars in subsidies from the government every year just for existing. That changed when Norway found them guilty of violating human rights and their subsidies were cut, but I won't get into that because I don't have a full list of governments that do that, nor how much. It's just something to keep in the back of your mind. So that's a lot of money coming in, right? But I can already hear a poll just saying, well, Darth, the preaching work costs money. All the money is spent to maintain properties, build new ones, and take care of our full-time servants. And to that, I agree with you. Mostly. Yes, the preaching work costs money. Jehovah's Witnesses' own grand totals report cited a cost of $242 million to support their full-time Bethel servants, circuit overseers, missionaries, and special pioneers. This is feeding, housing, and otherwise providing for said 21,629 volunteers all year it would add up very quickly. And they also spent nearly $12 million purchasing the land for the new Ramapro facility in upstate New York. And while there is no official source pricing out the new Ramapro facility or even Wachiel Bethel, current idle speculation for these properties range from $150 million to $400 million. Given that their total real estate portfolio in Brooklyn was once estimated to be worth a billion dollars, the concept isn't far-fetched, and they'd put a chunk of that change right back into another facility. But if only there was a way to see something officially documented, something with a real seal of approval, something- Oh wait, we have the tax forms! Yes, as a legally recognized religious charity, the Watchtower has to file taxes and declare both assets and income. Granted, at least in the U.S., religions are usually considered charities and are tax-exempt, but to maintain this status, 
proper paperwork must be filed under U.S. tax code. Despite the organization's secrecy, their own doctrine demands that they submit to the proper authorities when there is no direct conflict with God's law. This is supported by the May 1st, 1996 Watchtower in paragraph 7 of Paying Back Caesar's Things to Caesar. So yes, Jehovah's Witnesses may lie about protecting predators and using child labor, but they don't lie on their taxes. So, thanks to the 990T forms filed by the Watchtower to the IRS, we can determine that, at least in the year 2015, the Watchtower posted assets of $1.5 billion. For the record, these documents are indeed public record, and all it takes is a simple Google search. I'll also place the locations I found them in the description box below. Note that for reasons I don't fully understand, both of the 990T forms I've found denote different asset totals. Only one lists $500 million in book value, while the same year the other lists $1.4 billion. I'd need a tax expert to decipher them, frankly, but my only conclusion as of now is that something was amended either one direction or another, or perhaps it's two different holdings resulting in two different forms and a potential $1.9 billion in assets. Due to the complexity of said forms and the secrecy of the Watchtower, I can't say for certain either way. It's also worth noting that Watchtower has a sizable investment portfolio to which they're the beneficiary of, though this makes up a small amount of their assets. But if this has been consistent for the last near decade since the disclosure, I would conclude that yes, $2.1 billion is at least a reasonable estimate of Watchtower assets as of this recording, and $1 billion in annual revenue is also likely. I'd also like to say, while their expenses certainly would total above that quarter billion dollars that they spend taking care of the Bethelites, my best guess is that it's not even close to the amount of profits that they're bringing in from real estate sales and donations, completely tax-free. One expense that I'm happy to report that Watchtower seems to be getting frequently is lawsuits, mostly from their involvement in cases involving child predators from within their fold. So yes, these dedicated funds, as they're commonly described as, where they brag about children donating their ice cream and school money to the cause, go to pay for the trauma of other children that this organization has chronically failed to protect. If that isn't a reason to decry this obsessive, high-control religious corporation, then I don't know what is. Shout out to our friend Otangelo for today's prompt. Again, my friend, don't say I don't answer your questions. I just do them in a grandiose format after two weeks of thinking on it. But XJW agents, what do you think? Does Watchtower have too much money for an allegedly non-profit, charitable, tax-exempt organization? Or am I being too harsh on Sam Hurd, Stephen Lett, and his buddies at Bethel? Whatever your thoughts may be, I'd love to read them in the comments down below. Also, in remembrance of the many stormtroopers that I sent to the battlefront to retrieve this easily Googleable information, leave a like. And we would be honored if you would join us as a subscriber if you value future videos. Remember, agents, the elders may be watching you, but Darth Magog is watching the Watchtower.